This is the example for Russian world. This is Russian world. This video series is my personal account of traveling within Ukraine during the war, including going to the Far East to the front line. Nothing more, nothing less. Vladimir Putin has launched a major military operation against Today, this building was bombed. Sounds you can hear behind us is Russian artillery hitting the city. Just uh, wanted to destroy the civilization. This is my house. Uh, this is your house. So what you're saying is this war is more scary than World War II. Every man will fight. Bits of missile. Explosive smell. This is Russian world. Destruction everywhere. When they go outside, they feel like they're playing lottery with their life. Your and her heart are near. Unexploded missile here. Destroyed buildings everywhere. The air raid sirens going off in the background. This one's completely burnt out. It's probably one of the most dangerous cities in the world at the moment. Let's see how this goes. It's really quite hard for me to convey how many bullet holes are here. Now we've been told to stay right here because they expect that a Russian counter artillery. <laughs> Welcome back to another day in beautiful Kiev, Ukraine, capital city. It is relatively stable here, some signs of life coming back, uh, but there is the odd missile strike in the city. But today we're going to a place called Borodyanka. Borodyanka faced some unimaginable attacks, atrocities. It should be a, over an hour or so drive out of the city to where the Russians were occupying the city and did terrible things. We're gonna meet the people. It's gonna be a heavy day for sure. It's gonna be some extreme scenes. You've probably seen some of the clips of this place on the news. Let's head out, to see what the day brings. <laughs> Okay, so we've just pulled over on the side of the highway here and uh, we've arrived at this petrol station. Just absolutely destroyed. This is uh, Artom. Hello, hello. My name is Artom. Two months area. I uh, have bought uh, gasoline for my car in this gasoline station and now I'm in shock. Fucking Russians. So you were here two months ago filling up your car. Yeah. And this is the first time you've seen this. And, it's and all, all was okay. All was okay. You can see it. This is the example for Russian world. This is Russian world. Russian world. Do you have any message to... Destroy uh, and kill and uh, murders and a lot of bodies on the ground and destroy. I, I, I have no words more. I can explain my emotion about this. You have normal country, normal world. Why? For what? I don't understand. I don't believe in this. Evgeny, you say we're taking the back road because the main road's been destroyed? Yeah, yeah, uh, especially the bridge, so we need to ride this way because we just cannot pass the bridge. It's just destroyed and the road also is not good. It's a part of Russian uh, rocket. Ro not rocket, not rocket. Okay. It's a weapon with wheels and uh, with uh, great uh, straight. Uh, right. Understand you, you me? You put yeah? it in. And yeah. Down here, not uh -huh. a rocket. So we stopped on the side of the road at this car park, and there's just destroyed cars. What is this place? Like the uh, like just like a little uh, cafe? Or something? No, no, no. It's. Uh, some uh, shop where you can uh, come and uh, buy a new flat. Uh, oh, okay, it's a this... real estate office. Yeah, yeah, right. real estate office. Another uh, side of road, we can see our Ukrainian defense position. Oh, there's trenches here. Yeah, yeah. Russians claim that uh, their soldiers and their army aimed only military targets, only uh, something uh, soldiers, any, any soldiers or any tanks of Ukrainian. But if you see, they hit it. Uh, uh, real estate office and uh, gasoline station. Yeah. Citizen cars. It's not tent. It's not a weapon. It's car. For what I don't understand. Like every building has. Every building destroyed. destroyed. All windows yeah. are broken. All windows. All doors of all houses. The Russian pigs come in 
in flat for citizen and uh, stolen their their TVs, their wash machines, their toasters. So the Russians went in and stole their stolen appliances. Stolen, yes, and st stolen phones for people, stolen cars for people. How we can claim people who stolen things of another persons? A How? Thief. 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 Yeah. Thief. Thief. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. And the thiefs and murderers. Russian army, great army, the second army in the world of <laughs> of murderers. <laughs> Just driving along, just all the apartment buildings, at the very least, smashed windows, at the least, but other, other buildings are much worse than that, but basically everything's just been absolutely decimated. Cages on the windows, so robbers cannot let it get in, you know? You said this was a movie theater here? Yeah, it was uh, a cinema and uh, some shops, like a mall, little mall. So people were coming. And it was and only built like right before it was blown up? Yeah, right? I, I heard that it was uh, built a few months before it was brand new. And uh, just the war started, so people lost all their investments and all the stuff. Everything is destroyed. We've come to this place and it's just heaps of blown out cars coated in bullet holes and I guess uh, if Guinea that they went round and cleared up the streets because these would have been yeah. lying around the streets and yeah. they've just brought to this big area here this bunch of smashed up cars right yeah and uh, it's not the only place there are lots of such places with hundreds of places like this yeah yeah just bullet holes you're saying this is a, a yeah, Russian... This, yeah, it's a Russian war technique. We, we can understand it because of the locks on the front. In case they will stuck in the mud, they will took them out and put under the wheel so they can, can come out. We think that it's mobile crematory uh, in order to uh, put on fire uh, dead, dead corpse and uh, in order to hide the crimes which they made to the uh, civilians. So when the, they kill civilians, yeah, Ukrainians, then yes, they yes, can yes. possibly burn they can them possibly on burn the go, them. get yes. rid of the evidence. Yes, burning uh, dead or alive, I don't know, even people inside this mobile crematorium. So uh, I'm very unhappy. <laughs> saying that that church was bombed as well uh, yeah because we see that it was on fire they were bombing churches and all civil objects maybe people were hiding it i heard even that people were hiding in churches many religious people go to church when it comes for the time when they attacking with uh, the aircraft bombing all around so people were trying oh also you can see the uh, civil object which is destroyed People were sitting inside and just trying to hide somewhere from the missiles falling from the sky, but there were no safe places here for you and your kids. So if Kreni, we've found a Ukrainian tank. Destroyed by Russian forces, five Ukrainian soldiers were dead. this shopping complex behind me. This is an Intersport, which if you're not familiar is basically like a decathlon a sporting goods shop. And uh, this is, uh, you know, mangled beyond recognition. You can still see the uh, logo up top though. Being honest, uh, after a while here in Ukraine and seeing the absolute destruction, it starts to kind of, I wouldn't say you get used to it, but uh, it just, the scale of the devastation here is a blown out van behind me, the Ford Transit, I think. It just, uh, there's so much destruction that, you know, you look at it and it hits you hard, but uh, it's just on such a large scale that you kind of, I wouldn't say get used to it like I say, but um, just the destruction's on such a large scale that, uh, you know, one building, you know, becomes another building, another building, and you know, just destruction everywhere. Uh, 
our forces uh, destroyed the bridge in order not to let uh, the technique to pass through and to occupy more territories to kill our people. Oh, sh that's an interesting point is that uh, the Ukrainian military destroyed yeah, a lot of yeah. their own bridges to yeah. stop the logistics. Almost all the bridges were destroyed by Ukrainian forces in, or, in order not to let uh, uh, where it needed, not, uh, because it's a uh, strategy, war strategy, not to let uh, the occupant go further. It's already cleaned, so it was much, much worse. So we've arrived in Borodyanka and uh, this destruction is just absolutely out of this world you can see all around this isn't apparently this isn't the worst of the city we're going to go deeper but uh, i just want to show you something on this wall again got to be careful where you put your feet around here so as many of you know the russians use this z symbol on all of their military equipment to differentiate between their equipment and ukrainian it's now a very dark symbol you can see they've painted it on this building but uh ukrainians have come along and put it in a i and obviously the z's there so you can see what it says here we can see that uh, russians were uh, uh, lock picking the doors breaking the doors so people were locked inside no people were sitting inside yeah that's what i mean they were yes. locked themselves inside. Yeah, yeah, yeah 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 and russians were coming and breaking these doors taking off uh, and getting inside in order to rob them so the doors here, you can see they've been cut open to try and get in. If you imagine there's people inside of here, maybe. scared for their lives and there's uh, Russian soldiers trying to rip their door out. Uh, maybe a beautiful girl lived there. If uh, so, uh, it's, she was very unlucky because a uh, very high percentage of being raped. They were getting inside, trying to break the door and get and steal everything they want to uh, kill people. Uh, rape women, kill children, animals, take what they want because uh, uh, they have guns, you know. It's just the civilians uh, who just wanted to live their lives, they didn't make anything bad to anybody. How could they defend themselves when these Russian occupants with guns were here, uh, drunk, screaming, let us in? I don't know, I cannot even imagine what people felt uh, how scary they were, especially, especially if they were girls and women, and if they're beautiful, that's, that's all. It's better to shut yourself than to let them in, really. There are broken doors to rob them. They've just completely just ripped off this them. entire door here. And at somebody's house you can see china there's some shoes there nice plant that was somebody's living room imagine one day you're just living your peaceful life and then somebody comes and rips everything out what's going through your mind right now yeah it's a horror i don't even want to think i want to block my mind and don't want to know what happened here really because i know what these animals could have do to our people to our girls and uh, it's uh, not something that you just imagine. It uh, happened all the time, all over the places. Because they are not people, they are animals, really. Hate them, just hate them. Come up to the top floor and uh, there's a gentleman here who's actually repairing his house. So he's invited us to come have a look. Would he mind just explaining what exactly has happened here? I was not able to do this. When I came here, he was not here, he came here after. I saw that his uh, door is broken. They took all the gold he had. And uh, stole uh, the kids uh, gold watches. Where was he? In Kostubinsky, in territorial defense, uh, he was uh, a soldier. His family to the Czech Republic, and okay. uh, he stayed here to fight uh, against uh, Russian occupants. You were saying that there was a woman killed in this building? The woman on the first floor, as he heard, was killed. She was uh, uh, 
uh, a medical worker, so Russians decide to kill her. I don't know her story. What are some of the emotions when you came to this building and you walked in and found your house like this? Yeah. He was happy that uh, he and his family are alive and uh, house is, uh, you know, he doesn't care about his house, he cares about people. Unless everybody are alive, this is all uh, so small, you know, the house and other stuff, it's just tough, uh, doesn't matter for him, uh, uh, the only human lives matter. Они их выламывали внутрь, как будто или слепы, или не настолько тупые, не понимают, что легче на себя отломать. He, he is a builder and he understands that uh, they are so stupid that they were breaking the door inside, but the doors are open outside. So, so it, it, it was much easier to take the door off than to push it in. But they were pushing in because just they are too stupid. До этого они меня были братья, потому что у меня сестра, зять, много в России есть, родичи. His uh, natives, relatives, uh, are living in Russia, and uh, he could not imagine that brothers can attack brothers. But after such assault, we understand that, that, so, that he has no brothers. He's occupant. He's just an occupant. So you can see Nikolai there telling us the stories and he actually was part of a, a capture of a Russian soldier and they found him and he was a young kid and uh, when the young kid explained he showed his gun and the gun had not been used. The clip was full of bullets so it hadn't been used and apparently this boy was uh, taken out of school, had his phone taken off him and you know he was told that he's going on a speci special military operation and uh, then he was sent here and they uh, caught him and uh, he was pleading for his life and said that you know he didn't want to be a part of this but he was forced into it. Look around here. He was also saying that uh, people in people in Bucha we went to in the last video there were public hangings and then all the witnesses of the public hanging were shot. Women would purposely put mud and dirt on their faces to make themselves look less desirable make themselves look less pretty so they wouldn't get raped. So there's uh, half of the house destroyed. So we've heard like mixed stories about the soldiers, right? Obviously there were Russian soldiers doing terrible things, but then there's also innocent ones that were forced into doing it without wanting to, you know, like the young boy who was in a university 1500 kilometers from here and then was just thrown in the back of a car, had his phone taken off him. So like in the Russian military, obviously there's all kinds of people. It's not uh, all bad and not all good. There's people doing absolutely terrible things, obviously with the rapings and the killings and the torture. But then there's uh, the story of the young boy that uh, Nikolai was just explaining. Yeah, Nikolai told about the boy who did not want uh, to go to an army, but in his university the professor came and said uh, you too come with me and took a few boys uh, with him and uh, said that you are going to army and uh, they were given weapons, put it inside uh, these cars and they went to our country, but uh, when the first tank exploded those guys decided not to die and uh, were left in their guns and uh, go into our position saying we don't want to, uh, war, we don't want to fight. There's obviously a mix of Russian soldiers, right? Uh, it's very low percentage of such people who didn't want to fight because uh, uh, usually guys in the university could have enough money to pay the bribe and not to go to the war actually. But some of them could not, so they were persuaded to go to the war. They were afraid, actually, about their lives and their future. They were thinking that they, some of them, that they are making uh, right action also. They were brainwashed, absolutely. The TV programs and radio shows and everything, everything, everything for many years was uh, to make them hate Ukraine, hate Ukrainian people. They just uh, wanted to destroy the civilization. It's up to people to decide what to do. They, uh, even if you are in war, even if you are in conflict, 
you come and you decide whether to rape or not, whether to kill civilians or not. Nobody may persuade you to do this. So only you decide whether to do it or not. And they decided to do it because uh, uh, there is no humanity inside them, inside their hearts. They don't have hearts. It's my opinion, really. Children riding bicycles. Okay, so we've met a nice lady called Irina. Were you here during the uh, occupation or did you leave and come back? Нет, мы были с самого первого дня до последнего. They were here from the early beginning to the last days of the occupation, all the time. And so, Irina, is this your one of your houses here? Ну, вот это мы жили в этом доме. Квартира у нас была как раз вот эта квартира. They were living on the seventh floor in that house where there is empty space right now. There is no house anymore. It's completely gone. Yeah, it was aviation and also it was Tanks. Uh, column was passing through and tanks were firing at the buildings and after the aircraft was passing through and bombed at 8 o'clock in the morning. There were people inside this building and for present day not everybody are found still. A lot of members are lost but uh, uh, they think that uh, they are killed because uh, not everybody was found. If they would have been alive, they will call out, they will say mm -hmm. help, save, save our souls. And so what will you do now that you have no house? She don't know. Uh, she's just... She don't know. Uh, she, she came out uh, of her house in what she was on and uh, she went away only she took is where the documents nothing else so the only belongings you have now is just the clothes on your back mm -hmm. <laughs> people are helping her uh, just ordinary volunteers and people but uh, yeah that's all she has you said that you watched the building collapse yourself with your own eyes no da. yes for sure they were in that yellow house. Uh, the they were going to go home to take their clothes, and suddenly uh, the bomb landed. Uh, bomb so, so they were on the way to get their clothes when the yes. last yes. bomb hit. Yes. Maybe it was uh, ten o'clock, uh, eight o'clock, uh, and maybe one or two minutes saved their life because they were going to go there and take their clothes. They couldn't be inside the building when it happened. Before, in at the evening, it was uh, this uh, cassette bombs. Cluster bomb. Cluster bombs. Yeah. When they fall in, uh, it goes in small pieces. Uh, you cannot use it uh, due to war traditions in civil yeah. uh, places and objects, they are prohibited. Do you have a message for the Russian government? Putin. Dear Mr. Putin, you are a very bad person and they even don't know how to say about him in the Ukraine. and Ukraine. Stop uh, all this massacre in Ukraine. Stop, uh, Stop all this war, please. Skatina. Piece of shit. building here and uh, can't really follow up any words with that uh, conversation we just had with her she uh, started crying after the interview and uh, she was talking about when the Ukrainian forces came in and, and liberated the city once again that she just burst out into tears and she was remembering that and yeah, it's, 
it's, um, I can't really follow up any words, I'm not going to try to. You've seen it, you've seen the devastation, the destruction, the emotion. I'm going to say nothing apart from I'm going to leave uh, links below where you can donate. There are still things happening like this in the country of Ukraine right now. Uh, and there's people that need help. I'm going to leave the, the link again down below if you can donate. $10 makes a huge difference or whatever you have, more or less. It'll be a, a huge help to provide first aid, uh, blankets, um, clean drinking water, the essentials that uh, people need in times of absolute destruction like this. I mean, look, this is uh, where Arena, you know, spent her life and look at it, this damp kind of explosive smell. Right here is when they were filing, firing uh, missiles from planes and tanks firing at this building. Absolutely no words. And uh, I'm going to end the video there. Thank you for coming along to um, Borodjanka today. And uh, yeah, U Ukraine really needs our support right now. So yeah, thanks for watching. And uh, in case I don't see you, good afternoon, good evening, and good night.